strictly strictly access only using this point. Mm. Regular patrols are taking place. That's all right. We're regularly going down here now. So. They'll know. They'll know. So you'll be quicker just going down here, won't I? Yeah. Get out as quickly as you can. Nah. They're gonna. If they're gonna come. They're gonna come, aren't they? So I just get down as quick as we can. Ness Lighthouse from the from the television show. Oh, we're here today at Orford Ness. That's the old Cobra Mist uh, radar testing station, which may have been a feature of the UFO incident with uh, Woodbridge Bent Waters 1980. People are starting to talk about this now. Some of the old towers are up, and uh, they were transmitting a lot of power, apparently. Strangely enough, maybe in that direction, which just happens to intersect a couple of nuclear air bases. And what if a lot of power transmitted in that direction on certain frequencies could either cause people to hallucinate or could attract maybe real UFOs or... Hmm. Interesting hypothesis. And uh, you've got the Orford Nest Lighthouse right there, which was used as an excuse for why people saw a flashing light in the distance, but uh, I don't think you'd have a deputy base commander of a, a, a quote unquote potentially nuclear capable uh, air base thinking, oh, that flashing light, what's that? When he knows it's full well into the lighthouse. I don't think that would kind of happen. What's that? It's a long, long way, and it's painful there. The terrain changes before we get there. Mm hmm. But there's a mark in it. You can't just that mark, can't Mm hmm. Yeah. Now that marsh is, uh, it's okay. I've I've gone on uh, Google Google Earth and Google Maps, and I've uh, as if I'm walking down here. This is the way onto the island, as far as I can see. But it is a bit of a marsh pit that they've reclaimed into something that could be used for experimental purposes. So they were testing nuclear weapons. Atomic weapon, yeah. Yes, it's a, a nuclear weapon, radioactivity, uh, explosives used in nuclear ordnance. They said they never had any uh, large nuclear ordnance there. Hmm. They were testing that, they were testing their utility of their uh, shells and that on these jigs. Hmm. Yeah, what they were looking at is the uh, explosive types. Yeah, they were looking at the explosives that were used to, to actually trigger a nuclear explosion but to get a nuclear explosion you have to use explosives and you have to lens the explosive forces to get a critical reaction but you don't use nuclear material at the end of this critical reaction so you just get the explosion and uh, did you tell me that this is where they were checking whether or not these substances would go off if they were vibrated or smashed into walls or dropped off aircraft so um, they were basically uh, looking into new types of toilet and urinal technology. What did you say? A messy shit. So they recovered messy shit and uh, and see whether it uh, exploded. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get up there and we'll give you our full uh, toilet report in a bit. <coughs> mm. I 
think you're right though. That stuff that's gone in my eyes, it's made my eyes go like. Ugh. Anyway, uh, secret vault. Too tired to believe. Really think. Uh, going to Orford Ness, which is over there, and we've been walking for I don't know days. No water. <laughs> We're following, following, uh, following the sun. So uh, we, we might, we might make it. We're getting mirages as well. What about, about an hour walk, do you reckon, so far? Or am I hallucinating? It's only been five minutes, but it feels like oh, two days. Yeah, three, four days. Mm. Um, if we die out here, please just leave a donation. Mm. Well, check, check, um, check this out. And the reason I'm, I'm going all uh, homeboy is not because, um, not because I've uh, changed my religion or sex, sex or something. But, uh, this, um, this stuff that we're walking on, it's all right now. Hang on, it's pointed in the right direction. This is okay at the moment. Watch. But when you walk up this like that, look at the, the sort of. Um, Hmm, I'm showing it. Oh, there's somebody out there. Cars, you know, can easily get stuck in that. And uh, when you walk, you're never sure if your foot's going to slip and slide. So you're using a lot of uh, muscles in your legs that you didn't think you'd be using. Anyway, um, if you believe that sob story, please send $500 to the Church of Subgenius and uh, become a Reverend ordained minister. They need, Bob needs your money. I don't, but Bob does. So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna moan anymore. I'm gonna see if this guy, he looks like he's a runner. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty fucking, sorry, I'm pretty knackered now. We walk from, uh, let's have a look. We walk from up there. You can even see Sizewell, hang on, let me see the lens on. Sizewell nuclear reactor ball up in the distance. So, you see like white flash anytime soon. Um, this could become the new, the next Chernobyl. Quiz. Mm. Yeah. Hiya. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, we are the National Trust. Bugger off. <laughs> no, no, man. Right, what this guy is saying before the uh, the microphone has to get rid of all the noise is that there's a bloke in a white van drove up and told him to get off. Yeah, told him to get off this uh, landmass. So that was the problem. You why I look like um, somebody out of a 1980s pop video? Uh, it's because the wind's coming that way very fast, and uh, it's getting me in my eye. In my eyes, we think so. Ugh. Um, anyway, I'll add to that list of moans in a bit, so keep watching. I can swim, uh, this wind is a beast because it means my eyes are watering, I can't focus. I have to hold my hand right up against my uh, thing like this. To just be able to see. This is the sort of thing you get when you're like in Arctic winds. It's so bad you just can't see. And deserts. Um, you know, it's too. It's just too extreme. The IKS group. We had Luke from Living It Urban, who's like growing out of his uh, side like basket case that movie so he's like there he is so it's Siamese twin we got a cool guy NASA man yeah what does NASA stand for oh oh I was writing my I was writing my um ball glands yeah what does that stand for NASA not all sexual athletes isn't it yeah, I that. Mm. and we got Sam and Jess We've just got their own channel, so they can stay awake. Because I'm not, I'm not giving them any promotion, <laughs> even though it's called Sam and Jess. And uh, 
I think you, you're regretting that now slightly because they are salmon jess, but there are a number of salmon jesses. So let's get let's get closer so we don't lose what you're saying. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you're going to give um, links if you say people go look for salmon jess. It's going to come up. It's like there's um, people who do cookery, is it, and stuff? It's like a couple and they do like pranks to each other and actually how to of kiss them and mm. stuff. They got like a uh, quarter of a million subs. Mm. But it's much easier if you uh, go through to Sam and Jess Explores. Is that one word? Excellent, yeah. Best way. In fact, <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think there was a wind chill factor up there. It was taking the wind off me. I was I was like chilling and it was making my eyes water. And I think it just now we're in this warm sort of secluded area. I'm fine now. As usual, secret vault log. You could do, but if you go here and you're hiding you're hidden better, I say you just go down there or go down there, whichever. It's uh, hidden, I suppose, isn't it? It's like this hides it. Yeah, you're right. There's all sorts of lines and weird stuff going on. It's it's like either this is in the centre and the lines go out from there, or from up there the lines go out in, in radials. It's weird. Could mean that the lines of the uh, wires are going out in radials to keep them the same distance so that by the time the signal gets from the building to the transmitters they'll transmit in exactly the same timing because if they were one was longer than the other they'd have to put a delay in the line then to make them all work the same and, uh, as you probably know phase radars timing is essential These radars can focus their beams and go over the horizon and all this sort of stuff by using multiple transmitter sources. So if this is what that was, the timing's out, it's gonna bend the beam off. And the timing is wrong, and it'll bend the beam the other way. So and we're not talking about pointing the beam, we're talking about static. See these are all static, but if you simulate and adjust the frequencies between them and the pulsing you can actually make the beam come out and bend off in a direction or up into the sky so there's a phased array radar and that's what they're using in 5g phased arrays oh. although the way they do it there is much like they do it with the pave pause radars for intercontinental ballistic ballistic uh, missile launches. You've got these these weird little domes. No, you got these weird little domes that uh, have transmitters, or you've got like things that have like slanted sides, and they seem to like have a honeycomb. It's one of those honeycombs, if you've gone close, it's like a little little set of antennas, like little like bristles. They're all connected together. From a distance, it just looks like one thing. They're close, it's lots of bristles. What they do is they send the beam out, but then they can adjust the frequency where that beam is going. And instead of going kind of a straight line, it then whoosh, and goes off in a direction. So you think how long it would take to move a transmitter back and forth. Like if, if he was a, if uh, Sam was, uh, it's like the Royal, in Royal I Institution at Christmas lectures, yeah? <laughs> Let's imagine Sam here is some sort of moving target and it's very heavy. Then I have to, ing, 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 yeah, to do the sweep. But if it's running off a phased array system, I can do it at the speed of light, depending on how my 
my kit is operating so it's only dependent upon the speed of light and the speed of the processing you've got so you just go ch -ch 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 and scan wherever you want really quickly and of course there's no moving parts because it, the beam is not affected by moving parts so it doesn't it doesn't malfunction in cold weather it doesn't require oil it doesn't have to be monitored for um, how fast it's operating or whether it's overheating um, because it'll just work reliably much like LEDs you know phased array radar is like the LED equivalent of a light bulb to radar no moving parts lasts a lot longer less to go wrong in reality probably when you buy a phased array radar it only lasts a couple of months and they go oh it's just moved on now throw it away just like we had with LEDs they sell you on the idea and then it's shat Oh, well, this doesn't look like there's any cameras, yeah? Those lights look like out of the arc. So I can't see that we're, uh, per se, going to get any aggro from being in there. Let's keep walking around then. So, uh, well, maybe that's the razor wire behind, look. Oh, no! Oh, boys, I think we better turn back, look. <laughs> it's the razor wire that you'd have to step over if you're danger man. Sneaky though, you didn't see oh. you taking your ankles off. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Oh, that that razor wire. Razor wire, mate. Razor wire. That'll, that'll stop you. That's going to stop you right up, mate. It's the danger of death sign. No specifics or you know, watch out for this area. It's just general. In general, just danger of death. So. Something here smells of like creosote, and I'm seeing oily substance on on these, and I'm just going to sniff it because I want to know. I'm not getting the smell really, but. Something here smells, it looks a bit dirty, a bit, you know. So can you see what I mean about this being looking a bit dirty, like something might have been... Oh, it's upside down, hang on, that's weird. Ah. Oh. It's like a discoloration here. That's why I thought it might be oil, it's, it smells of something. I wonder if it was oil or creosote, but it's, uh... Mm. Mm -hmm. From somewhere else, because it was on a beach, like Barry, that got uh, oil slick. Right, that's number one, so they'll give it to you for free. Yeah. Second reason is if you put this down, it's got oil on it. It does. It does this to plants that want to grow, and they just die. So you don't have to keep on uh, weed killing because oil and oil is an effective killer of uh, life. So I don't know. Yeah, but see, when the military have got it, it's not at all a wildlife sanctuary in any way, shape, or form. But the moment the military give it up, it's suddenly the most amazing sanctuary that needs to be uh, protected and keep people out. You see how they work that? It's really clever, isn't it? It's like when we when we want it, there's nothing here. When you want it, there's something there. That looks pretty easy to get under the fence, eh? Is that? It'd just be lifted up or something. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. yeah, there'll be a way in. They just keep going until you find it. Do you want to hold the camera so you can just squeeze through? Penetrate. Try and try again. <laughs> huh? Oh. Oh. Hmm. So, Steve, you were born for this, mate. You was born for it. I don't know if it's just me. I think I've always thought Madonna was quite a minger. What do you reckon? Did some of you have a crush on Madonna? I think she's a minger. Yeah, no, she's gonna be a bit mucky here. Yeah? 
As well, she's got like a gap in her teeth. I mean, who the hell could stand having a gap in her teeth? Mm? Yeah. <laughs> Stinks of oil all the way around here. So considering it's probably a uh, wildlife sanctuary or some sort of site of scientific special bat interest of just get away from our island, you, you pesky kids. Yeah. Yeah. They never looked after it when they had it because it stinks of diesel. But now somebody else has got it. It's uh, yeah, very important. It is preserved. A bit late. Late back, won't we? Yeah. Oh, I know. Mm. I can't imagine that being the way they get them. No, it's a bit. Uh... Although. Look above it. Look up there. Look up. Oh yeah. Fingers. Oh, oh I've got him. We're good. We're ready First for you. Hmm? Oh, but easy. Yeah, take it off. That's a good idea. Oh, just carrying everything now. Wow. I, we're all still intact then after this razor wire. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep your eyes out for old cameras. But to be honest, look at the, look at the state of these lights and stuff. They're all fallen down. Look, they've literally just fallen, rusted. You know, if you turn them on with them in that state, they probably fuse the bloody place. It's just, uh... right. is that recording? Yes. Luke said, "Is that 4G on the top?" Well, it could be 4G. It could be. 5G could be 3G or 2G. I've got 4G. Mm. What about a BG? Mm. Yeah, could be Barry Gibbs himself strapped to the side of a mast. Oops, very high frequency. So it could be him. Um, I'm no expert, but I've kind of been told that the 5Gs tend to be smaller antennas although they're working at the moment at the same sort of frequency it's shorter antennas because those big boys up there they send and receive higher powers and 5g transmits lower powers so it's thinner shorter aerials but i could be talking out of my butt there so that's a long distance range 4g probably and it may or may not be in use it's very hard to know if an alarm goes off when we open the door in the building uh and we'll soon find out whether it's active. You could also look if you get signals in this area and what signals are. And sometimes if you put a software on it, it tells you the signals, it tells you which actual transmitter it is. Mm. It's a kiln or something. Oh, yeah. Fire or kiln, yeah. I want to get on the roof. I want to get on the roof. Mm. Oh, oh. 
yeah, that's just uh, cartwheeling. That's that's probably that's probably just to put people off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably Radio Caroline. Get up on your phone, the live stream for Radio Caroline right now, and uh, listen to what's coming on the Radio Caroline stream and whether that's what you're hearing there, because maybe it is just to um, make you not want to go in there. Mm. <laughs> to get out to the distances Radio Caroline needs to be used to on medium wave, they're going to be transmitting a fair amount of power in the, not the tens of watts or hundreds of watts, but probably tens of thousands of watts or hundreds of thousands of watts. But they may not be able to afford millions of watts. That's a lot. Ugh. So, he's underneath the uh, transmitter now, and I can't really. <laughs> can't really see where they've gone. I think it'd be better off walking around the uh, outside the glass rather than bending down. Uh, I'm lazy. Uh, you, can, you can get on the roof. So why would we want to uh, make our... Oh, there they are. Whoa, bloody whistling through here. Yeah. Well, if it's medium wave, does it tell you what frequency they transmit on? Yeah. If it's medium wave, yeah. there's going to be a lot of watts. We're not talking tens or hundreds, or even thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of watts. Mm, kilowatts, <laughs> probably not megawatts because megawatts cost a lot of money. Mega yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got to go and have a look at the old uh, the doors, huh? No. Huh. Turn away now, folks. Let's see you up here. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, it's a baby nest. Oh, look at that. It's the baby eggs of uh, something. Oh, I wonder if it's uh, if his parents are around or whether that's uh, game over. Oh. Metal chair legs or something. This door is alarmed. Why is, isn't it open? This door it doesn't look like it's got a lock on it. Did you try sliding it? Yeah, oh, it might be locked on the other side then. <laughs> yes, yeah, locked. Like a little loading rack. Oh, oh, le bab eh? and two eggs. Can I have two eggs? <laughs> Parents are diligently trying to distract us away from the nest. Leave so my nest alone. Uh, radio, Radio Caroline. Uh, 2020 medium wave frequency. Here are some details. Hmm. Ready, Caroline. Hmm. Wikipedia. Our ship. Yeah. Nah. Say so Orford mm. Ness. Put Radio Caroline Orford Ness. I that. That's good. Yeah. Right. Radio Caroline Orford Ness transmitter frequency. 
According to Wikipedia, the station was designed to transmit powerful medium wave signals mm. to much of Europe on two frequencies, 648 and 1296 kilohertz. Mm. Built by the British government, the facility passed through various owners after privatization in 1997. Ah, it's a boat. With the camera. Oh dear. It's a boat. We can get out of here then. We can use the boat to escape. Oh, we're safe now. What's them dish thing? A satellite dish. Casserole dish. Okay. Good to know. Go. Uh. I found the golden gem. Have you? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always find the golden gems. Mm -hmm. I am the golden gem. Mm. What's this golden gem? Ich, ich, ho, it is a, a, it's an, it's an aircraft from the World War II period. Oh no, sorry, it's a, it's a railway, railway car. Oh, no, it's a, it's a generator. Do it make it? Dale, generating plant. Hmm. Sweet, nice little thing. Strong smell of oil here. Hmm. I wonder if this is still usable. Fuse it. Yeah. Uh, there's no power factor. The needles are not showing voltage in. Does it actually connect to anything anymore? Mm -hmm. See, the oil priming pump is actually in the on position, but I'm not hearing any noise. It's weird. Engine heaters are on. Battery charge is in boost mode. Nothing. Mm. Hmm. What's this though? Exit lock. Oh, that's solid. Mm hmm. No way. Please mind the step. I would. Honestly, if you just let me through, I'd find it. There we go. Mm hmm. Oh, it's solid, isn't it? How have they done that then? How have they done that? Done. It's just like seized at the top. Uh, seized. Hmm. Hmm. Being oh guys, a bit stiff in it. Hmm. Just needs a bit of oil. Mm. That's where we came in. So it's just around the side. I wash. Hmm. Oh yeah, so the generator substation room. I'll oh, show you just the substation room, sorry. It's on. Mm -hmm.
It's hard to know if any of these are actually in use. Oh look, cables. Seems to be going into the floor. This cable. Hmm. Now these uh, dishes are only receiver dishes. Now, how do, how do I know that? They're not beaming out large amounts of power. And how do I know this? Because this thing here there's an LNB and that is small and it's reception if they're big chunky things with fins on them like L big boy over here then it can also be transmitting as well but is it or is it not actually transmitting well that doesn't look right but even worse that is the horn where the power is meant to go through through a reflector into the dish and that's missing. So I would say it's not transmitting. It wouldn't matter that all this crap's on it because it'll still, it'll still bounce the signal and do what it's meant to do and reflect the signal. But it's got no head end, no LMB or buck unit as it's called. And uh, oh, that one has though. That's got its buck units on it. So have a look at that one then. So that might be transmitting. Hmm, look at the. Uh, Burfordness Lighthouse. Mm. Nice walkway. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I don't know so far if I've actually found out mysteries of Orfordness, but uh, what we've definitely got here though is um, somewhere where they've been able to transmit a lot of power. It's designed with. Um, you know, massive electric cables and lots of feeds. Um, I don't know why they'd need this many dishes unless they were actually doing multiple channels out there. Like they were, trying, they were receiving multiple stations and transmitting multiple stations. As it exists now, Radio Caroline is just one, two or three channels. So it wouldn't warrant all of this. So God knows what they did in the day. I think they, they said that the smaller of the long time the large one um, out, of, you know, out the around the side. Yeah. That's the one that's transmitting um, radio Caroline. Mm. Someone seemed to know. It's interesting if it is because uh, when you transmit low frequencies, they got a very long wavelength. So when you've got a long wavelength, you could have an antenna that long to transmit it, or you can place you can do tricks to kind of get your antenna legs down. But you know the VLF transmitters, they transmit to submarines. Mm. It's so low frequency that they can go through the earth, they can go through the sea. And uh, those frequencies are so long that the antenna wire you've got is about like 600 miles long. I'm just guessing. Mm. So those little transmitters we've got out there are only a couple of hundred feet. Now they can trail a wire between transmitters, but they're not very long. So I don't know medium wave and 648 is the low end of the medium wave band as well but uh, hmm, just a just a food for thought maybe when we go around there we'll look for these wires between towers maybe there's a very thin wire going between the towers that's the one that could be long oh that freaks me when it ugh. and you're walking across something isn't it? And you, yeah you start seeing everything moving at different speed and mm. mm. Yeah, these might be vents or something, possibly. Mm. Uh, it's mm. transmitting where you have to come to a main entrance, isn't it, won't we? Mm. Presumably, if there is someone in there. So this big dish is very large, it's bigger than those ones up there. So that would allow it to receive a weaker signal and boost it by the fact that it's larger, it, it focuses it in. Um, but, we, mm. but is it a transmitter or a receiver? Right. It's a receiver. Mm. Well, it could receive as well as transmit weak signals, but it's a transmitter as well. You've got multiples, you've got receiver is a small element and the big ones 
are the transmitters and there's more than one so it's, it's sending out different frequencies at once but is it transmitting right now no where to there's a we could transmit up there to the horizon or against a spare satellite mm. it's just been just plonked there could be spare but then would you leave all the uh buck buck transmitter converters on it isn't it isn't connected you're right that means that it's probably not because doing that will be enough whoops a daisy doing that would be enough to uh to put it off axis and uh need it to be retuned but the reason I don't get that's transmitting to anybody is because there's no wires coming off the back of the head. No power equals screw you. So, yeah. Oh. So anyone who gets panicked by seeing this sort of stuff, see on the back of the heads there, there's little screw in bits and the wires will go down the side. You know, if you stand in front of this, trust me. Yeah, no power going through that. Most of those would be about in the 250 watts to 1000 watt range and it's not going to kill you if you stand in front of it. It might, if you put your head right in front of the focus point, then it's like um, focusing the sun onto a piece of paper and your head would kind of get a little bit warm there. You stand back, you know, no big deal. I mean, satellite dishes are good if you want to put your head there. You can hear distant sounds as well. They're great for, you know, being able to listen in to people miles off. Here we are. Um, let's give it a go. Jess, this is a little science experiment. If you stand up by the gate up there and whisper to yourself a secret message, and we're going to stand here. Now, bear in mind, for sound frequencies, the reflection distance is different. But I'm going to put my little head up here next to this non-transmitting thing. So, tell us your secret message, Jess. Nah. Did you, did you whisper it? Did you whisper your message? Did you get a bit louder? Yeah. Can you hear me if I do my secret message? Can you hear me? Ah, bollocks. Oh, shit. What's the secret message? Mm. Oh. oh, I thought it was. All right. That's what I told him it was. Well, our little science experiment didn't work there, which means if I'd gone to the science museum or one of these little sort of, you know, labs, oh, I'd have, they'd, have kicked, they'd have kicked my uh, kicked my ass out. But it is points, not pointing exactly, and it's, it's very focused. So if you go to get it pointing exactly, you might get it. But what what they do is they put one there, put another one at that end, and then both of them together reflect both to each other so you can have a conversation with somebody or does it that could be the code required for an extraction mm. Mm. oops no no dice grandma you can get absolutely on the roof if you want it's around the other side though mm. Mm. All right, what would these be for then? Or oil tanks, perhaps? Yeah. Well, that. Hmm. Hmm. Go into the ground. Mm. A couple of big oil tanks, maybe. Mm -hmm. And those look like oil connector or petrol type connectors. So yeah, going in, going in down there. This is like a funded. Diesel containers or something. Mm. For generators and uh, backup systems. Could be for backup systems or it could be for heating as well. Which is maybe why they don't use the generator anymore because 
there's no fuel store on site perhaps I mean when it was MOD they probably needed an absolute backup you know that would last a long time you know maybe now generators have got smaller there's probably a generator in here somewhere and uh, it's not critical you know it's not critical critical because uh, Radio Caroline could go off for an hour or a couple of hours and somebody would drive out here with a generator or fuel or something but the MOD wouldn't accept that so that's why they probably had the big stuff on so uh, and generators in the back in the day as we saw they were monstrous sized things now generators uh, they wheel them in on the back of lorries and they've got more power than the uh, huge ones of yesterday so there's probably a little generator on site say somewhere yeah, what's that? What's that? Oh, someone's tried to get the door open on the wrong side. Oh, yeah. You mean... Oh, yeah. Why would they do that? Separate... It's like bounces separately. Oh, yeah. Weird. Metal plates, come on. That's all the Different type of transmitter on that one. Hmm. Weird, it's like a re reflector with a shield on the back of it. Mm. I wonder what that is. Oh, it's a double reflector. Hang on. It's a double reflector. The receiver, you might see this now, the receiver element, known as the LNB, it picks up uh, the signal bounced in from the reflector in that way. But it's been reversed, it's been turned, so it's bouncing onto that one into that one and back in that way. Make sense? It's a double reflector. Mm. Go up there and show you what I mean now. Because the, the pickup side is definitely on the wrong side. So it looks like some sort of protector to protect it from the elements or something, or maybe to stop some stray signal getting in somewhere. No, it's... Um, it maybe changes the focal distance in a short space. Oh, there's an egg there. Yeah. Well, what was left of an egg? Anyway, this wind is horrendous. <laughs> Better tried these doors, huh? There's not much point. Oh, look, curtains up there. Transmitter curtains. Mm -hmm. What are these? <sighs> Maybe housed um, more fuel tanks. Fuel tanks. This is the uh, crane I was talking about. It goes on the back of a uh, tractor, but it doesn't have any. Um, tracks so you just wheel him along give him a bit of power off the tractor and you can uh, operate this little scoop oh, sorry scoop mm. I don't know if they've tried that one but you can get up over there you can't climb up there well you can go up with the doors yeah did we try these did you try them no, they're closed, are they? Okay. Oh, you'll bother with it there. We'll give it a miss. Look at these bloody seagulls. They're like, get away from my house. Get away from my house. Strength in numbers, eh, seagulls? Anything? Anything? You get onto the roof where they put one of those annoying things on the ladder. Really oh. Hard, so. mm. It's doable, but uh, yeah, they have a hmm. What's this? Yeah, let's go in. Hmm. That's weird. It's like a cage, Faraday cage for a vent. Is that a vent hole up there? We don't want you going up there. Maybe you could push your way up into there by lifting, lifting the bar up. You know. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. Hmm. They've sealed it off, haven't they? Blinking well, have. That is an, that's a vent up there, and I just don't want you getting too close to it. 
because it might be a way in, but it's probably well secured. I mean, I would not leave that unsecured. You'd have to be stupid so somebody can spot it. Yeah. No! No! No, it's an open vent. Oh, I see mean. Hmm. We're going in there. We're going in the vent. Goes a long way. Is it just straight through? Straight through means it's all of it. I couldn't see a light at the end of it. Oh, there's music coming up from over there. It might be coming through this vent, actually. Here we go. Oh! oh What's that? Bloody hell. It's made me jump, man. I thought somebody, we had an electric shock or something. I was like, ah, no! Now bear in mind, check it to make sure it's not rusty because you might just fall oh, through. Poopa. 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 <laughs> but if you got down here, would it go anywhere? <laughs> Oh, it's welded though. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be kidding me. Mm. I think it's easy to do, isn't it? It's easy to do when you've got a sand around. It's right behind there, the noise though, isn't it? I think there's a speaker all over the place. Well, well where are these speakers? It's right further along there. For a second first, mm. get over first, and then you try and throw them all over. Yeah. Then the point of throwing them all over, you can't get over. Yeah, that's it. I'll, um, I'll have to move in. Try and drive my down as well. Steve Wills, not just a pretty woman, Steve UFO researcher. Now also part of the Urbex fraternity. Like a drug. Like a drug. There he goes. Claire, if if you if you're losing Steve Moore on the weekends now because of Urbex, this is where it all started from, right? Claire, this is where it all began. <laughs> A McFlurry with an Oreo. Oreos in them, they're good. Not at the moment, you ain't. Nope. I'm suffering withdrawal symptoms. Mm -mm. No, no, I pressed the button by mistake. Didn't go. Oh no! Oh damn it! Oh, thank God! Thank God! Oh look! They found a way through. Oh, thank God! We got intrepid people. We can, we can look at a puzzle like that and, and kind of and not see it as a challenge. <laughs> One for the bedroom, bedroom wall. Yeah. Mm. 
Hmm. Keep pressing the button, my mistake. Got uh, the canal. Hmm. <laughs> Nice though, we're heading over to uh, civilization again. Lighthouse and the oops there, the lighthouse and uh, some buildings which look like bunkery sort of buildings, but I don't know. That's the weapon mm. Area. This is bloody awful. Wind. This is this. This is this. Oh, yeah. They're all. Coast back. It's so cold. I'm back to my bag. There's a wind. I'll save you having to suffer that. What I'm basically saying is here, we've been walking for hours. We didn't get really very close to the uh, lighthouse at all but you know we've been walking about five hours now and we're trying to make our way back to the sea wall which will allow us to walk all the way back to civilization and I don't have any water and I don't have a coat and the problem is it's starting to get cold now I never thought you'd get cold on a hot day like this but it really is getting very cold because the wind is rushing past us so fast that it's actually taking the heat off us and I was feeling a chill. Now this might be because I was suffering from heat stroke symptoms and uh, it was just very very cold and it took two to three hours to walk back at least to where we where we were originally and um, yeah it wasn't very nice and uh, I was getting pretty miserable and I was being a bit of a Grinch so I'll, I'll save you the sufferance of having to deal with that but uh, yeah yep uh, never mind never mind so now I'm trying to explain that I'm walking with my bag in front of me because the wind is is taking so much uh, temperature off me that it's chilling me out and I'm also having to walk with my with my arm around my neck in order to stop my neck getting chilled so even though it's an absolutely blisteringly hot day earlier on now we're starting to feel it really badly oh. And just to save you having to suffer that wind noise again, I managed to find a, I had like a ninja thing in my in my bag, and I put that on because it's it's just helping keep me warm a little bit. But it's all about temperature right now. Um, it really is bad. So I think it must have been just heat stroke and then the wind at the end of the day. But I was suffering really badly, and. Uh, <sighs> It just took forever, I mean absolutely forever, to walk back. Um, it didn't matter how long, looking at your watch, the the place never got any closer. And it just kept on going on and on and on and on and on. Um, so I was not a happy teddy. I really was not a happy teddy. But you don't want to hear me harp on about that. We'll, we'll get... Car somewhere. Car is... Uh, there they are. Ten miles. And there. Uh, Somewhere. Uh, there. Uh. So anyone who says that we. Anyone who says to you. Anyone who says just a little walk along the beach. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Taking us like. Don't believe it. Flat winger. He and others believe me it was a small walk. Oh, 
problem when it's like a, it's, it's not blowing a gale but this is nasty so do take a coat with you just in case it changes because it's like well until the end of the world which is comfortable so hence my uh I'm saying, yeah, it's uncomfortable. I, honestly, I, I literally felt like I just wanted to sit down and give up at this point. I was just so exhausted. It was not funny. So if any of you are actually thinking about going over to Orford Ness, trust me, take the right clothes with you, even if it's going to mean a bag, because you are going to be walking for several hours. Um, it is not. It does not happen quickly. Um, if you can find another way to get over there quicker, great. But all these things look quite close. They're not. In the end, um, my hat blew off. I didn't even want to go and get it because I just couldn't be asked turning around to walk back and get it. That's how knackered I was. I was. I was just like, it was every. It was just one foot in front of the other. And I know it's going to sound like I'm being a baby, but I swear I had heat stroke. It was not good. Um, and when I got back, I had to drive three or four hours to get home and then uh, literally I was screwed for like three or four days after that I was absolutely screwed so I do think I probably had heat stroke there so it just goes to show the importance of uh, covering up properly and having the right the right stuff and even though it's you know sunny day at the seaside the winds that were whipping around there once the sun started to go down a little bit game over the temperature dropped severely and yeah i mean if it had got much worse i think i might have i could have easily passed out and if i passed out then people have just had to have got the bloody police to come down and get me off the beach so um thankfully i managed to get back to the car and i was not feeling very good so moan 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 Thanks very much for watching. We are going to go back. I'm going to take my electric bike next time and I'm going to whip it at high speed down that beach and get to where I want to go quickly, film what I want to get filmed and then get the hell out of there. But um, not an easy one, that, not an easy one at all. So thanks very much for watching.